Branding is a communicative process that involves the efforts to shape human identity and influence perspective. Our lives are saturated with corporate, manufactured meanings that in many respects lie largely out of our control. Branding is about creating complex systems of meaning that shape social realities and people's identity. Brand is the constellation of meanings, feelings, perceptions, beliefs, and goodwill attributed to any particular sign. A brand, then, is less about the product per se and more about the constellation of meanings that a product embodies and the feelings and perceptions that such meanings invoke in the customer. Companies develop a brand formula that highlights what the advertising industry referred to as the unique selling proposition of a product, a uniqueness often rooted in highly questionable claims. The process of branding thus involves a construction of a set of meanings around a particular product, person, company, town, city, or even a country. Leveraging the meanings and emotions associated with the company to encompass a variety of different products, products that frequently bear little relationship to one another. The brand consumer relationship is not static and has undergone several transformations over the decades. Branding is a fundamentally communicative process that's grown increasingly sophisticated during this time. The efforts of corporations to capture our sense of self and connect consumption to individual identity has transformed. In the 30 years following World War II, Fordist capitalism was at the height of its power. Companies' marketing strategies during this period were not dissimilar from a sender-receiver model of communication in which the goal was to get information out to customers regarding the superiority of a company's product over rivals. It should be noted that while branding and marketing tended to be fairly functional and mass-oriented during this period, there was also a strong aspirational quality to marketing efforts. Companies and their branding strategies do not live in a social or political vacuum. And what was going on socially and politically in the 1960s and 70s had a significant impact on the ways that companies marketed their brands to customers. In this area of niche marketing, we see how branding strategies respond to the changing cultural and political environment. A shift to consumer engagement is a direct consequence of the emergence of neoliberalism and the recognition that we are now firmly in a period that we might call communicative capitalism. We have therefore moved to the point where brands function as institutions. Talking about employees rather than customers in brand context is a little complicated. Consumers are actively involved in brand management. Companies use their brand public as a source of innovation for their brands. In other words, brands put consumers to work, resulting in a process of value co-creation between producers and consumers. Moreover, company employees are consumers of their company's brand in that, at least ideally, they must internalize the brand to live it. So how might we think about the relationships among work, branding, and the entrepreneurial self? First, we can say that the brand changes the relationship between the individual and society. There's an important sense then in which the entrepreneurial self is a central figure in the new era of branding. The enterprise self is by definition a branded self. It's important to draw attention to the degree to which employees have become an essential part of the corporate branding process. Branding is a form of organizational communication that extends beyond the employment relationship itself. Brands draw on our everyday lives, and workers and consumers draw on brands as a way of articulating their identity. Branding has been with us for 150 years, and there's little doubt that it will continue to define our relationships to organizations and corporations. One might argue that branding in and of itself is not unethical, rather certain branding practices are. The reality is in contemporary organizational life, branding is an intrinsic element of what all organizations do on a routine basis. The ultimate goal of corporate branding effort is to mediate as many aspects of the human experience 
and identity construction is possible. Certainly, the development of marketing suggests that in the days of relatively clear separation of corporate advertising and everyday life are long gone. We live in an environment that is completely saturated with mediated, branded meaning. It's almost as though nothing is meaningful until it's framed for us by a corporate sponsor. As such, corporations and the meaning systems they create and play a disproportionately large role in defining who we are as people. We suggest that branding is not by definition unethical. All organizations have both the right and the responsibility to construct meaningful relationships with their various stakeholders, and branding is one part of that process. Consumption is a disempowering act to the extent that it undermines our sense of ourselves and engaged citizens and makes a fetish out of our relationships to objects. Consumption makes us all a little more private, a little more isolated, and a little bit more disengaged.